Hey, welcome back to my series where I help another YouTuber, Melissa Lucy, pass chemistry. I created a free study plan for her to help her with her exam and to help you with your exam. You can get this free study plan using the link in the description box. All right, let's get started. So I know you had your meeting uh, today, right, for to see if you can get more time for the test? Yes. Could you get more time for the test? Yes. <laughs> Yay, okay, cool. How much time do you have? I think it's typically like, what, two hours? Um, so normally I would have 50 minutes and they tack on an extra 30, so. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then that will give you plenty of time to check your work and then not freak out as much yeah. <laughs> and stress out as much during. Cool. Okay. So for today, we're basically just going to look over um, the electromagnetic spectrum. And um, the main thing I want to do with this one is sure we'll talk about like the concepts and we'll talk about the different terms that are typically multiple choice questions. But the main ones that I see um, like students struggle with is just the calculations. So because there are multiple formulas that you might need to memorize or he might provide that I'm not sure, um, typically they have you memorize it, unfortunately. Okay. But, uh, but I really wanted to practice a lot with those because they tend to be kind of, like, it's just word problems. It's a bunch yeah. of word problems. So it's kind of like- Is this the Planck's way. constant thing? Cause I think he said we do have to memorize that. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Then yeah, it's, it's that. And then it's like the speed of light, con like C constant. Yeah, I think he said we need to know those, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, let's just, let's start off with just the concepts, understanding where everything comes from. When we're talking about the electromagnetic spectrum, um, I kind of want to take a step back and look specifically at something known as the electromagnetic radiation. So all that is, is light. Like all of these things that we're really talking about is a bunch of fat, fancy words for just light. Okay, that's all we're observing here. Now, uh, just to kind of know these definitions is gonna be important. Just knowing that light is a form of radiation or electromagnetic radiation. All that means is that light is some sort of form of energy. And then the reason why we tend to see like light waves or those waves is because we have uh, different electromagnetic fields. So both electric and magnetic fields that are oscillating, just meaning they're moving back and forth. So we're literally gonna get that kind of like wave form because they're just literally moving back and forth. Like we're gonna see, let me highlight. We're gonna see our electronic field up here and then it's gonna come down, right? And that's where we kind of like get that waves, that wave sort of formation. Let me put this in blue. And then same with the magnetic field component. So it's really all just kind of like those waves. That's it. That's the main concept here that we're gonna keep looking at. Okay. But we're gonna get into, into a little bit more detail understanding the different parts of a wave. So the major things to know, I'd say these three, is understanding um, one, how to calculate them, and two, what they actually do. So we have a wavelength, and a wavelength is basically just telling us um, what the color of the actual light is. So if we change the wavelength, we change the color. So if you'll notice here, this top one, well, this is a little bit wider, I'd say, a little bit more stretched out for that wave, and that tells us, okay, it's actually gonna be red. If I were to kind of compress it a little bit more, it changes the color to yellow and then so on. If I compress this even more, it changes it again to blue. Uh, something to note here for wavelength, the different units that you're gonna see is meters, micrometers, and nanometers. The most common one that most tests will actually have you put the answer in is gonna be nanometers. So just a huge hint right there, that wavelength needs to typically be in nanometers unless they specify that they want it in meters or something else. And next is the amplitude. So it's pretty much just talking about how high that wave would be. And then specifically, it's gonna talk about the brightness of the light. So how intense is that light? So once again, if I were to look at this one, this is completely stretched out, that wave is stretched out, then I know, okay, it's gonna be more dim. If I were to kind of compress it a little bit more, it's gonna be brighter. Okay. So understanding those like properties and seeing what changes whenever we change the wavelength and the amplitude, those are multiple choice questions for you right there. Okay, good to know. And then same with our frequency, just understanding what that is. So our frequency, which is represented by kind of like this V looking shape, but it's not a V. There's gonna be like a main differentiator right there. Um, we will talk about, so this is frequency, 
This V is velocity. It's why did they choose that? I wish they didn't, um, but it's really similar, so beware of that. Okay. And then our frequency is basically just the number of cycles that we have. So the number by number of cycles, I mean like oh okay, this is one cycle. If I were to continue, oh okay, that's another cycle. So how me however many cycles we have or wave crest, and I'll explain what that is in a second. Uh, what else to look at? The units. Units are always important. So for frequency, you're either going to see that this is seconds to the negative first or in hertz. And then just something to definitely know is that one hertz is equal to one second to the negative first. Just in case they don't provide that, definitely know that because it will come in handy with a lot of our calculations. Okay. And then the last thing on this slide is just talking about the relationship between, um, the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So understanding that they are inversely proportional, just a quick review on math. Whenever something is proportional, that means as one increases, so does the other. Whenever they're inversely proportional, that means one increase increases and the other one decreases. Okay. So looking at this one, that just means as we increase the wavelength number, then we're actually going to decrease the frequency. So let's kind of put that into understanding. So if this is a shorter wavelength, then we're going to have a higher frequency and vice versa. If we have a longer wavelength, we're going to have a lower frequency. Okay. Any questions here? I don't think so. Okay. I know it's pretty straightforward for now. Yeah. Let's do a little bit more of the calculation side, but this is just looking at uh, how to actually calculate a wavelength. So if we were asked to calculate uh, a wavelength, there's two different ways that we can do this. We can start off with just looking at the two different crests. So this, this would be this top part of our wave would be our crest. This bottom part would be our trough. Okay, so those are just two different things. Top is crest, bottom is trough. And then if we were trying, if, let's say if we were actually just given um, this number here, let's say this is, I don't know, 0 0.22, and then this was 0 0.78. If we were only given those values, then what we would do to figure out the actual uh, like number for our wavelength is simply subtract. So larger number minus the smaller number, that would have been that 0 0.78 minus 0 0.22, and then that would have been our wavelength. So in this case, uh, that actual subtraction is 0 0.56 and then whatever this is measured in, which is in micrometers. And then same thing goes if they were to just give us like these actual values here for the trough, this is at one, this is at 0.5, we would simply subtract that distance and then we'd get the actual wavelength. Okay. So little simple things that just in case, you know, they have that on the multiple choice section, all right, the main main event here. So the electromagnetic spectrum, essentially what that does is it's just gonna represent the different forms of the electromagnetic radiation or of light, All right, So these are just different forms of light, essentially. So we would start off with, I would say, if you went over it, uh, some professors do require you to know kind of like the different types of waves that you might see. That might be a factor. Um, Typically, I haven't seen too much of that. It's more of the calculation side that they're really focused on. Um, but just in case he might be, we're going to find out in the practice exam either way. But um, one thing I want to also point out again is just seeing this relationship between the frequency and the wavelength. So as this starts to increase, our energy is then, actually it's low here and then it's, it's a little bit higher up there. Let me say that again. So our wavelength, we said, as it goes up, the other goes down. Okay. As we see that here, this is like 10 to the fifth. Well, this is 10 to the negative 15th, which is smaller. And then this is larger. So the opposite, sorry, let me say it again. Right. <laughs> this is larger. I know it's like, okay, 10 to the fifth, what's that? And then 10 to the fourth. Okay. Yeah. And then same thing here, like this is higher, right? This is at 10 to the 24th. And then this is at 10 to the negative 15th. So negative exponent is gonna be smaller. 
The other thing I will say to definitely know is at least understand that like, oh, okay, the wavelength for uh, visible light, and by the way, this is kind of like this right here, this little section, you're gonna talk a lot about visible light since that's what you know us as humans can see. Um, we're gonna see that like for, for a wavelength of like red, the color red, that's gonna be at 750. Know that number. So know that range. The main ones that I typically see are either actually both different ends, is the red and then the purple or violet in this case, which is 400 nanometers. Because they may ask, oh, you know, what color is this? And then like after you've, you've solved for the wavelength, they may say, oh, what color is this? And then your wavelength is, I don't know, 650. You know, that's orange. Oh, so I should know each of the colors and like about where they fall. About where they fall, okay. yes. Yeah. And the main ones I would say to like definitely know is like the ends. Right. Yeah, definitely the ends, definitely red. I see that one constantly. So that could be one thing. Another thing is if they were to give you a bunch of wavelengths and tell you, and they would actually say, oh, arrange this um, according to increasing frequency. And then you would have to know the actual relationship between that and just knowing it's the opposite. So the higher the wavelength, yeah, the lower the frequency. Okay. So yeah. just little things that they may do for, like these are great multiple choice questions. Okay. I hope you're learning a lot with this series, just like Melissa Lucy is. Now, if you need additional help, then head on over to melissamaribald.com and I'll see you in the next video.